Hi everyone. Today I wanted to demonstrate how I have gotten through my experimentation some wonderful grungy texture, partly from stuff I have around the house and partly from just my regular art supplies, but the combination turned out to be wonderful. So this is going to involve encaustic wax. Uh, first off, you don't need to go out and buy anything new because you should be able to do a similar technique with any kind of wax, even candle wax. Uh, pretty much the procedure would be the same. But for now, here is in the background, you can see my tub of encaustic wax that's melted. And then uh, the materials I'm going to be using are alcohol ink, this Distress Spray Ink, this uh, op uh, Transparent Ink, and just some diluted black acrylic ink. These kind of materials, you're going to see how they each react differently. So you can use these materials in any combination, or you can go out and get paints and experiment. So let's start with the basic process. All right, so let me adjust this a little bit so you can get a better look. I'm out here in the corner of my garage because when you use any kind of wax, you want to be in a ventilated area. Okay, my common paper that I had in the garage that I thought, I wonder what would happen if I used this, is drywall tape. Anytime that you do uh, drywall on the wall, you put the tape up so that you can then plaster over it. And I had this left over from years ago, and it's a great paper because it's very sturdy, but at the same time, it's very absorbent, which you're going to see in this process. So that's my strata, my background paper that I use, is just your ordinary drywall tape. The first thing I did when I was experimenting is I would cover part of the tape with wax. And you'll see it bleeds through, of course, to the other side, and that's okay because, again, it's a very absorbent material. And so we're going to put it on there just in random. Now, normally with encaustic, you would put heat on it and get this really, really soaked into the paper. But with this paper, you don't have to do that. It's soaking in as we speak. I don't want to cover the entire paper. I want some of it left alone. But at the same token, I want to build up layers of it. Now, I happen to have in this um, area some white also. What I just used was clear. And now I'm using some of the white encaustic. Again, don't let the fact that I'm using encaustic wax keep you from experimenting. So there we have a nice piece with some built up wax. You can see some ridges. And we're gonna just let that dry for a moment. And uh, while we're doing that, I want to show you a finish piece on the results that I have gotten in doing this exact process. Um, these are some colors that I've used in the past. Again, it, through the same process we're going to talk about. And it just depends how much you apply where you scratch it, what you do with it. You can get some just wonderful effects. I sure enjoy using these on my journal pages. As you can tell, I got so excited. I used about half a roll. And um, these are just examples of what you too can do, depending upon your materials. 
When I have used it on one of my journal pages, this is an example. Down at the bottom, you'll see a picture I took from a magazine. Actually, it was a picture I took and printed it. It's just trees out on the coast here in California. And I added this strip across the top so the two of them together work really well to give that wonderful branchy tree grungy look. That's just one way I've used this. On some pages, I have merely um, just taken the strip and put it on and then just um, continued to collage around it, use the strip. For example, I might use this strip as the centerpiece and then collage around it because there's so much going on in each one of these strips. So, getting back to our strip, the wax is dried, and now we're gonna take kind of a sharp instrument. In this case, it's a seam ripper that I happen to have, and we're just going to scratch through in random ways. We're just gonna scratch through our wax. It's still kind of wet, so it's very easy to scratch through. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it looks like when I scratch. So that's what we're going to work with. The wax, varying degrees of depth on the tape. Now, first thing I did, and this again was all experimentation, is I put down just some ink and brought it through like this across the tape. You can see that the wax repels it. And so it sinks in just like right there at the end. Right here at the end. It sinks into that paper I left exposed. Look, right there. That looks great, doesn't it? I just love that. Now, what am I going to do with that? Well, the next thing I'm going to do, because wax is funny, it really only likes alcohol ink. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe off the rest of it like this. Now, I could leave it like that. That's pretty cool in and of itself. However, I want to score into, with color, I want to get more into the grooves. So here I have a black alcohol ink. Now you'll see how exactly the alcohol ink differs when it's on the wax. It isn't, the wax doesn't really repel the alcohol ink. Alcohol ink likes a hard surface and of course, a non-absorbent surface. That's what the wax is. It's a hard, non-porous surface, unlike the tape. So with that, I can take this and I can get some great color down in those grooves. Now again, I can come back and I can wipe it and change it a little bit. I can make it rougher looking. I can use alcohol. As the name implies, we're using alcohol ink and that ink responds to alcohol. So on this piece, I have added a little terracotta which has darkened it quite a bit. If I want to remove some of that, you can use a little alcohol. Here's some that I just spray or dropped on there. You can use a spray, you can use a cotton ball, whatever. And by rubbing on that, you can see that I can remove or manipulate the ink itself. So now we have some depth to our experiment here. I kind of like that, so we're going to try another one, maybe with different colors, so that you can really see how what we can do. So again, 
We're going to take a piece of our tape, our roll of tape here. This time we'll do it a little shorter. And we'll do the same thing. Let's just go ahead and use the same, pretend like this is even white candle wax. Now, honestly, I have not experimented with white candle wax, but I don't know why, common sense wise, you couldn't get a similar effect. But to me, friends, half the fun is in the experimenting. So I'm probably would encourage you to experiment more than anything. This is just an example of what can be done. Now that, I haven't got the wax on quite as deep as I did on the other piece. Let's just go ahead and score it a little bit. Let's pretend like we're getting really carried away here, which we are, there's no pretending. And now we're gonna take our very diluted black acrylic ink. I had a little bit left, so I just added some water to it. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. I want it very diluted. I'm not looking to cover everything because as I showed you in the last example, we're gonna go ahead and wipe some of that off. Again, because this is acrylic, we don't have to use the alcohol. We can just wipe it off. Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? Can't you imagine that on a journal page for a little extra effect. Okay, now let's try this one I think is ginger, which is a, again, alcohol ink, a little bit of a red color, and let's see how we do with that one. I'm kind of following the lines, but not totally because I will also come back. Ooh, maybe not, maybe I'll just leave it that way. Oh, that's the beauty of experimenting. You just get to do whatever you want. And uh, I kind of like, oh, I don't like it when we have spread it. I like it when the black shows through. In fact, why don't we try this? Why don't we add, on top of that, a little more of the black? because nothing shows grunge or says grunge like black does. So now we have an even different look. Both of them are wonderful, but you can see in this one piece the differences that we can get. Depending, again, on the manipulation. That's a good use of the word manipulation. So, I do like that piece a lot. This is a piece that I did earlier that I think when I showed you earlier, and I like it, but I think I'd like to add just a tinge more of the grungy look. So, over here in the paper part, I'm going to go over that terracotta look with the diluted black, and I'm just going to Take it down a notch. So, just again, you can change it and do whatever you want. Out of all of these that I have done, I think I really like this effect the best. What do you think? For grunge, let's do one final one. Let's... Let's pile our wax up even deeper. We'll uh, make some ridges with the wax. All right. We're not going to worry about getting that totally dry. We'll... I have colored um, all kinds of colors on this encaustic wax, 
but I'm not gonna go into that because I don't wanna complicate it. I want you to feel like you can take your ordinary stuff that you have and not invest in something else and you can, well, not invest in a lot more. You can go buy one color of, a, of alcohol ink and just experiment to get what you want. And uh, so we're just sticking with the um, basic colors. Again, we're going to start with the black. You can tell I kind of like that. This is our diluted acrylic. Diluted even more. Now, that gives it a nice soft gray background. But this is a distress ink. It is tea dry, tea dye distress ink. So we're going to spray that for effect also. Now, I want the effect mainly out here on the paper. It'll soften the black a little bit, almost make it look like vintage. So now I think for this, for this grungy look on the paper, I think the alcohol ink that works in my mind will be terracotta and we'll do this see how it spreads in the crevices but it's not repelled by the ink if you get into encaustic you will know that Alcohol inks are the only, that and uh, not watercolor, but um, anyway, there's only one other ink that Encaustic likes to deal with, doesn't like to deal with acrylic because acrylic has small plastic pieces in it. So here again, we've kind of let it soak into the crevices, we're just going to kind of blot it. And we're going to take our acrylic. I want it even darker along the edges. All right, so now maybe I want to lighten up that a little bit. And oh, do remember, colors change slightly. You can see what the alcohol does as far as reacting with the alcohol ink. Colors do change slightly when they're dry. There, let that dry. And I think that's what we'll stop on. I hope this is giving you an idea to go out and have fun. Play around with waxes. If you want to try alcohol ink, it's fun. Um, and your acrylics, also your watercolors. And an absorbent tape like this one. So, just to run through again all the possibilities that I've discovered so far. All right, friends, that's it for today. Go out there and have fun. Thanks for watching.